The excitement is in the air and the festivities are already underway in the Derby City for Thunder over Louisville. We've got team coverage for you on the night team. I'm Connie Leonard. Doug has the night off. Meteorologist Colleen Peterson is in the Weather Center tracking the latest forecast for tomorrow's big day. But first, we want to start with WHS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Aspen Hester who caught up with people in RV City. And Connor, are folks already staking their claim to prime viewing spots? Connie, you would not believe the amount of people we've been running into and speaking with today. Or then again, maybe you would because again, it is thunder. Uh, still, though, we do want to warn uh, everyone at home to just realize the conditions here on the ground at Waterfront Park. Kind of muddy, kind of uh, damp. So just be sure to factor that into account when you go ahead. Pick out your shoes for tomorrow because you don't want to be wearing uh, any flip flops or anything out here in this grass. Still, not even the weather, nothing. You know, rain or shine could dampen the mood here for the spectacles we're about to see tomorrow in the sky. On the eve of thunder. This is my favorite day of the year, my favorite weekend of the year. This is better than Derby. As fighter jets navigate the sky, onlookers marvel, camped out in RV City. This is our favorite part. I love the fireworks, but this is so exciting and get your adrenaline going. To be able to sit here and watch these guys and gals maneuver through the skies and these skyscrapers is just phenomenal. It's a tradition unlike any other. We've been coming down here the last 20 years, the same parking lot. From old friends reuniting. I mean, we have looked for it and talked about it for the last two or three weeks, just get, uh, getting ready for it. To family gatherings, bringing dozens to the waterfront. You know, the favorite thing is about the 40 people that we're going to have here at my RV tomorrow. Family, friends, all gathered together. These Louisville locals are ready to welcome thousands from surrounding states. This is Louisville. This is Southern hospitality. This is how we roll. We want you to come in and enjoy it as much as we do. Um, we're actually from Dallas, Texas. It came a long way. <laughs> Elizabeth Way and her crew from Texas are marking their second thunder this year. These are new this year and they uh, they speak for themselves. <laughs> for them, it's not just about making a quick buck, but making an impression on the people. Yeah, Kentucky is a great place. You know, even from Texas, it's because it's, it's they're a really great place. So yeah. we're pretty because they're the friendly state, but you guys are pretty friendly too. And on the Ohio, high river levels have left park benches submerged and the dock empty for now. Conditions have led the Coast Guard to close off a three mile stretch of water from Jeffersonville's Duffy Landing to Cox Park off River Road. So we'll meet people from all over the city and then people from out of town that just hear about this and they know it's a great time and a great show, so they'll come in for that. But whether you're watching from atop the water or the waterfront, we get to show off truly the best of Louisville as casual Louisvillians. It's a near guarantee you'll see spectacles unlike anything you've seen before. We're talking spectacles in the sky. Hey, even maybe some spectacles staring right back at you in the funhouse mirror on the carousel. Now we do want to tell you about tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of road closures. Obviously with Thunder, it's a large scale event. You're looking at one, the second street bridge is going to be closed. River Road is going to be closed. Parts of Floyd Street are going to be closed. You're looking at a lot of closures for that and more information. You can find it on our website, whas11.com. We're live here on the waterfront. Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1119 on your side. All right, Connor, thank you so much. And as Connor mentioned, high waters on the Ohio are impacting some boaters trying to view the show from the river. Now, according to the gauges at the McAlpin Dam, the water levels reached just over 50 feet as rain moved through Wednesday into Thursday. Flood stage was at 55 feet, but since then, the river levels have dropped. At 8 p.m. tonight, they were sitting at just over 46 feet. And we had some severe storms move through last night, dumping plenty of rain. Meteorologist Colleen Peterson joins us now. And Colleen, uh, the rain is gone, right? Mm -hmm. So it won't be here for thunder? The rain is gone, and okay. it's not only last night, really, the past few weeks, we have been getting dumped on. Mm -hmm. So everything to the north as well, Indiana, it trickles down the Ohio River. So yes, we almost reach minor flood stage, but thankfully that forecast by Saturday night is supposed to go down even further. I know it's super cool to head on the boat and view the fire 
fireworks, but I think they're having that restriction due to the safety of wake zone and flooding there near along the river. But it is going to be soaked regardless because of the rain we've seen. So I recommend boots and shoes you don't really like and maybe even have those lawn chairs instead of blankets or thick blankets or maybe something under it because that can get soaked pretty quickly. Those are the things you really have to keep in mind. Other than that, a great forecast. There is some guidelines. I remember last year we were concerned with some of the cloud coverage because it has to have a certain level of cloud coverage for visibility for these jets to fly in the air show at full capacity and it can't have wind over 23 miles per hour. We're not concerned with either one of those this year. We have full visibility, so we are expecting a full air show for that. So we'll be in the 60s. That wind is not going to be too bad. Maybe 5 to 10, maybe 50, 15 not 50 miles per hour. We'll be in the 60s for the air show, but by the time we head towards the fireworks at the night, it is going to get a little chilly. I'll tell you what your low temperature is Saturday night here coming up. Connie? All right, thank you so much, Colleen. Well, you'll want to get down there early to secure your spot. The Thunder Over Louisville Air Show begins at 3 tomorrow afternoon. The drone and night show start at 9 o'clock, followed by fireworks at 9.30. Well, today more vendors moved in and set up along River Road. There will be a lot of road closures that you want to know about tomorrow. So text Thunder to the number that is on your screen right there, and we will send you the information straight to your phone. Hurstbourne Acres is hit with another act of violence just a day after a home invasion and rape. LMPD responded to the neighborhood again last night in response to a violent carjacking. LMPD said around 915 last night a couple was trying to sell a car on Facebook Marketplace. Now when the suspect came to pick up the car, they allegedly tried to drive off without pain. One of the victims was dragged several feet and it happened in the same area where police say an elderly woman was raped in her own home. Around 2.30 in the afternoon Wednesday, police say a man knocked on that woman's door. When she answered, he pushed her to the ground and raped her before stealing items from her home and running off. LMPD is asking neighbors of Hurstbourne Acres to be extra vigilant. And they say if you saw anything in either case, and you may have some security video, you can call LMPD's tip line, that number 574 LMPD. And in Jefferson Town, police are investigating a triple shooting that left one person dead and two others injured. The call came in around one this morning when police say an argument broke out inside an apartment on Taylorsville Road near Linwood Way. When police arrived, they found 22 year old Al J. Williams dead at that scene. Police are asking anyone with information to call Sergeant Richard Burns at the J-Town Police Department at that number that is on your screen there. That's 502-267-0503. According to Louisville's gun violence dashboard, there have been 126 shootings in the Derby City this year alone that left 144 people shot or hurt. While this number is down from this time last year, advocates are still looking for ways to reduce the violence. 20 churches have assembled to renew a 2006 program called CARE that stands for Criminal Activity Reporting Effort. Through CARE, the churches have agreed to collect and share anonymous tips with LMPD in the hopes of stopping crime. Donnie Moore Sr. says the main reason for renewing the program was the mass shooting at Chickasaw Park just over a year ago. Two people were killed, four others injured in that crowded park, and yet police still haven't had any tips to help them solve this crime. If you knew who committed crime, if you knew who killed somebody, if you knew who uh, robbed somebody, you don't have to tell the police. Drop a note in the box. This gives you a double buffer that nobody will find out who you are, but you'll be helping the community and possibly even your own. Any churches interested in taking part in that program can contact Donnie Moore Sr. And we have his contact information on our website, whs11.com. The Louisville Zoo was closed for several hours today after a bomb threat early this morning. It happened around 845. LMPD evacuated the zoo staff, members of a walking club, and anyone else as a precaution. Unfortunately, the incident caused at least one Kentucky school district to cancel field trips scheduled for today. No students or buses were at the zoo at the time of the threat. The all clear was given late this afternoon.
Kentucky lawmakers did not set aside any money specifically for teacher and staff pay raises in this year's past budget, despite calls from the governor to do so this year. However, they did include language in the bill that pushes schools to provide raises on par with surrounding states. The legislature did provide a 9% percent total boost to the state's public education funding model, but superintendents say this money is not nearly enough to provide the raises they're asking for to compete with starting salaries in Tennessee and Indiana, Hardin County schools would need to bump salaries more than 9%. With incoming state funding alone, they'd reach 4% at most. In Bullitt County, it's even less. Just utilizing seat funds, we would be looking at 3% this coming year. I feel like we'll be able to push and get a little higher than 3%, um, but we're going to maximize any kind of revenue that we can. But you not only have to think about teachers, you also have to think about your classified staff. We have to have bus drivers. We have to have those working in our child nutrition programs. We need custodians. So when we talk about raises, we can't just talk about teacher raises. We have to talk about everyone who's involved in education. Uh the Oldham County School Board is set to meet on Monday to vote on salary increases. How much that increase will be has not been decided yet. Well, the fight to get a Bob Baffert trained horse in Kentucky Derby 150 is not over. Today, Zidane Stables filed an appeal after a district judge in Louisville denied their request to place an injunction on Churchill to allow their horse, Muth, to run in the Derby. Baffert was banned from Churchill Downs after one of his horses failed a drug test. Judge Mitch Perry yesterday didn't dismiss the case altogether, saying he was concerned about the ban hurting innocent third parties. However, Perry denied Zidane Stables request for an injunction saying in his ruling they knew of the ban against Baffert and still chose to have him as the trainer. In their appeals, Zidane says it's in the public's interest to see the fastest horses in the Kentucky Derby.